it's going. All right, what is up, everybody? It's Gutex, and welcome to the untitled, as of yet, untitled esports show. I am here with two veterans of the esports industry. Uh, we got Zorin all the way on the left, by way of Australia, coming to you live from uh, super rainy <laughs> Los Angeles. And uh, we got Slasher in the middle, coming to you all the way from super rainy New York City. <laughs> Guys, thank you for, for joining me. And thanks to everybody. Thanks to the one or two people that are watching right now. Uh, we thought that there was a gap in the market, a gap for an esports show that would cover all of the issues, all of the Twitch drama, all of the, the yeah, all all of this, all this stuff. Um, a gap in the market since uh, one of Slasher's earlier shows, Live on Three, no longer exists, and uh, so we're we're coming through hot and heavy with a three webcam setup. <laughs> Production um, values. Ryan, that wasn't at all what the planned, <laughs> like, uh, you know, intro was supposed to be. For the three people that are in chat, one, I'm going to need PogChamp and chat, Twitch chat, from all five of you for PogChamp on the screen. I know some people just only know you as PogChamp. Um, I'm going to need Zorina, I'm going to need you and Ryan to tweet out the stream. This is what I had to do to Wheat and Scott. I'm like, okay, now, now the stream is live. You two have to tweet it out. And we're going people actually know that we're live and are actually watching us because we're not popular people. Well, Ryan. here's the thing. Uh, your I plan intro really for care. me and Zorina did not go well at all. Okay? I asked you She's guys. She's the Australian girl and I'm the New York person. <laughs> this is what you ended up with. I asked you guys to submit your bios. I was going to read them word for word. Unfortunately, I guess your uh, publicists just didn't get them to me in time, so we just did it off the top of the uh, off the top of the dome. But Slasher, go ahead and introduce yourself. No, 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 I was, I was, I'm all right with what you did. I'm just saying it wasn't <laughs> all like how I thought it was going to be. I just want to. We say talked about the... it, and then like as soon as we went live, the whole script just like went out the window. <laughs> This is true. You e know what? I want veterans, like, Zorin and Slasher. <laughs> Zorin thinks of herself as what a up? content creator and a writer first and foremost. <laughs> Slasher <laughs> thinks of himself as the number one esports journalist on the Consultant. internet. Consultant. Consultant, oh, Ryan. Sorry. It's in my fucking profile, all right? Consultant <laughs> and insider. World's number one esports consultant. And kick. I mean, come on. It's not that hard. Multiple websites have said that too. Every time that I tell them to write that, they write that. So now they it's write true. what number oh one? God, they actually write I'm the world's <laughs> number one esports consultant at Insider. You know why? Because I told them. Did they ask any questions? No. Did they just print it immediately as I told them to? Yes. And now it's a fact. So there's not much more than that. All you gotta do on the I'm internet, gonna like see journalists. It. I'm going to need to see a source, and okay, no your problem. Twitter is not a valid no, no source. No problem. I got you. I got you, bro. I got <sighs> yeah, you. Yeah, let's this see. I want to see. And what... what um, this one's easy. What uh, media organization of high standards and integrity could po would possibly put you, Dude. put Rod Slasher Breslau as I have number one esports consultant? They, you're, for one... I have a whole page dedicated. Even the uh, wow, like, you even have a head. The SEO, <laughs> yeah, the SEO title of the of the page is Rod Breslau dash one dash esports dash consultant. Okay, I'm so fucking good. Right, so what? So what outlet to help their SEO for that that website? Sure. What out? What what uh, what reputable news outlet put that on there? Okay. No. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna just show you. That's what I can do for someone's SEO. That's how good that I am. Ryan, I'm gonna, no, but I'm gonna I, get you the, I'm gonna get you the uh, reputable outlet that that you are asking for <laughs> to help to help us. Okay, here here's one. Um, here here's Variety, who is a very famous entertainment and music and movies, and now they have a whole games section about video games on there. Uh, very very famous magazine. What's it called? Ryan. Yeah, what's Variety? It? Variety. Wow. Yeah. You must know Variety. 
All right, great. So we've established Rod's uh, credentials. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm at this party to share the, the show. Uh, sure, Rod. Well, I mean, if Variety say says it, it must be true. So <laughs> I mean, right, I actually need to read this. All right, it says an esports consultant and analyst, but it doesn't say the number one esports okay. consultant. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Thank uh, you, Zorin. That for their fellow editors. You know, they didn't want to make them feel bad. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, because they, there were they, people they in the office better. that were claiming the number one esports consultant slot, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, and they, they knew it was me, but they didn't want to intrude on their own employees. They felt that was, you know, They're not it sure. would mess up the workplace. So Inner office politics, the, of course. Yeah, yeah, it would hit up the morale, <laughs> make everyone lower. They didn't want to ruffle some feathers in there. So they, they, couldn't take, they couldn't put that in there. But they, they know, they know. They, had, they put part of it. Okay, well, I'm glad we spent the first five minutes of the show uh, introducing you as the number one esports consultant. Here. We, we, got, we got next Rod. week another incredible okay. journalistic I don't think we outlet. need to see any more leaks. I believe the point has been proven. <laughs> see, all you gotta do is tell uh, these journalists that work at famous websites who you are and what you are, and they don't ask any questions, because that's kind of how things run now on the internet, which <laughs> we'll get to in just a little bit, because we're some more great topics. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good segue. Show. That's a good segue into a first topic, actually. <laughs> oh, no, that's not our first fucking topic. Wait, no? Well, Zorian, Do we have a run sheet? How, uh, I mean, we, I mean, <laughs> sure, we have the number one esports consultant joining us, Zoreen. Please introduce, <laughs> please give yourself a better intro than I was able to give you. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, uh, yeah, I am Australian. I am based in Los Angeles. These are facts, so they weren't inaccurate. Uh, I used to work for Yahoo Esports, so that's like my esports credential, I guess. And of course, uh, before that, GameSpot, which is where I met Gutex, and, um, and, and Slasher as well. So we worked there together. And now I work in an esports agency, so I've gone over to the dark side of things. Is that the say. dark side, or is that the light side? <laughs> no, I think it's the dark side. Marketing and such is the dark side. And we do consulting as well, so technically... I too am an esports consultant. Shit. Oh wow, you got some competition, Rod. <laughs> Zorin's coming in hot. I've been in a variety. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, for all of the you know twenty people watching us, you're the same twenty people that might have watched our previous show <laughs> that me and Ryan did at Gamespot. Uh, Zorin, fortunately for you, probably was not in that show. Zorin, you actually, I mean, Zorin met each other. That game's about she fucking Australia for a long time. Uh, Travis finally gets Zareen to fucking move oh over to North America for Yahoo Esports. Thank you, Travis Gafford. Everyone, we all know Travis. Um, we give him a don't, round of applause. No, don't give him, don't applaud Travis. <laughs> don't applaud Travis. Right? Unfortunately, shortly after. How short? Thing, uh, how shortly after? You moved Zorin, did Yahoo, you know, and then make it official, immigration, green card, and all that well, stuff. Well, did, did Yahoo Esports, e uh, <laughs> did Yahoo Esports, like, fold up? Uh, it was, like, I think it was 10 months, around 10 months. That's so not I moved. bad. That's not yeah, bad. it wasn't bad. And, like, I don't, like, regret it or anything. So, like, obviously I'm sad Yahoo Esports went down because it was, like, the number one esports media website at the time probably still is if we're still around and uh you know it's sad that it went down but like i don't regret like coming here and moving here and being like la is like the hub of esports right now so it'll work out in the end right <laughs> i mean look it's not bad but it took me at least a year for me to kill on gamers is right okay, so, <laughs> that, wasn't even, on that wasn't even you that killing it that was someone else uh, well, you know what? Uh, no, my participation was not good. Uh, Thorn then being kind of racist against <laughs> Poland also did not help us. I want to say it's a combination of a few things. It was a group uh, effort. On our <laughs> it was a group effort. Thank you, Zarin. Thank, thank you. Yahoo! You know, you guys is also a group effort. You fell together. <laughs> you all went down the Congrats. honest ship. Congrats. Congratulations. <laughs> And now you guys you guys both went from super high budget esports production that esports money was so sweet counts for at least you know 3x normal USD and now here we are <laughs> with a show that is finally sustainable because it requires I mean essentially 0 dollars so well, that took congratulations. an hour to set up <laughs> 
the real story, Gutex, where the fuck have you been? <laughs> where this, have I been? Oh, wait, okay, we, we just went over where, where what happened with me and Serene. Now, yep. Gutex, Pogchamp, for, mo for most of you out there, <laughs> I know that's really, that's really how you know of, of Ryan here. <laughs> When you only started uploading on Cross Counter recently, and now we're doing the show here. Where the where the fuck? What's going on, bro? How how are you? <laughs> hmm. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Gutex. Recently resurrected from the <laughs> dead. I was in a dark place at a dark time. Cool, uh, cool. Things <laughs> real, real. Keep here, it real. Here, yeah, yeah. Things started to deteriorate. Uh, I don't know. Late. I don't know. Q Q three Q four of twenty seventeen. Uh, I hit what could be referred to as I don't know writer's block for content or videos and whatever. Uh, that combined with a whole host of uh, I don't know life situation changes uh moved to relocated from the you know from the the capital of esports aka los angeles to the new capital of esports las vegas and recently started to produce content again and thought that since your show rod live on three wasn't around anymore <laughs> and you know you guys had both been burned by you know esports money not lasting i thought that you guys would appreciate the diy efforts going around going on around here you know what i do appreciate the the diy efforts i just want to say twitch uh dj wheat money bags is still a twitch ryan Okay, so Marcus is doing just okay with all the esports money currently. <laughs> yeah, so what you're saying is he is is he left his boy down here in the struggle. <laughs> uh, you know what? I've always been in the struggle. Uh, also, me and Scoots, not 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 on the greatest of speaking terms right now. So what you did you what? do? You know, that's for another time, Ryan. Okay, <laughs> I'm here for you and about you. Why do you decide to go from L.A. to Vegas? Because as we know, Zoreen's in L.A. now. You could be hanging out with her, <laughs> right? Now, a person you don't want to hang out with Zoreen. And Why when I was Vegas? in, and when I was in L.A., we did hang out. Check, you know, all of the, you know, check the archives. DMs. Check the tapes. Check the Check tapes. The <laughs> Check the tapes. Check the DMs. But I move. I moved to Vegas because I. I just don't. There wasn't a lot in LA. I mean, people can argue that LA is where esports happens. Blah blah blah. That may or may not be the case, but I would not say that it mattered. Like. Just because LA was the is the home of esports doesn't mean that I, uh, that had anything to do with me. Um, so I saw that there were more opportunities in Vegas, so I dipped. That makes sense. I think especially for FGC, right? Like FGC is kind of like separate from esports, all the esports that's happening in LA specifically. So like, yeah, exactly. Plus Think about We're it. We're like comedy sports, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, think about it this way, right? Like, I think that esports. I mean, this is part of the problem that a lot of FGC people had with esports the entire time, which is that esports is so broad and encompasses so many different titles that you definitely will have cities or areas that are really good for one game, but they don't really exist for the other games. And I think that Vegas has this sort of perfect storm of factors that will specifically benefit fighting games and Battle Royale style games. Why Battle Royale? So I think that there's something to be said for the type of experience that the Battle Royale genre provides because let's say you can get 100 people in the same room playing the same game with each other and so when you look at for example events like the ninja event that they had around the launch of uh, esports arena las vegas you have the opportunity to um, as like a fan or a player 
you know, play with your favorite streamer or Fortnite player or whatever in a way that's just not really possible um, with other genres. So I think that that lends itself well to Vegas. Well, what's the difference between Vegas or the OGN studio in Los Angeles that's running the PUBG League or Korea's gigantic ass? Great question. Um, <laughs> I, so, I know. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. That's, here's the, here's here's the, the big Twitter bucks. Ten points. <laughs> yeah. This is why <laughs> you're number. This is why you're number one, Rod. <laughs> um, the difference between L. Where'd you say it was in LA? LA. Uh, it's in Manhattan OGN Beach. Studio. Okay. Run, and and League. where's the other one? And then Korea, Korea, South Korea. Okay, I Which can't speak. Another I can't. I can't speak for Korea because I've never been there, but I have been. I used to live in LA and know it very well. The difference is that uh, you Manhattan Beach is not a draw in the same way that Las Vegas is a draw. It's easy to get people to go to Las Vegas professionally, recreationally, whatever, because Las Vegas. Uh, for people that live in North America is, you know, is a draw in and of itself. So if you add, you know, esports factors to it, and then you combine it with other circling factors around Vegas, such as gambling, and then eventually esports gambling, legalized cannabis, uh, you know, all these factors that swirl around Vegas, uh, I just see that there's it's going to be way easier to get people to travel there as it has been for you know decades long before esports was around, and I just don't see Manhattan Beach having the same appeal. The other thing is that Manhattan Beach is so far from every other place in Southern California that it would take forever to get there. It's not a travel destination. The list goes on. Uh, so that's why I think Vegas has the advantage for that type of thing. I mean, okay. the only thing that comes to my head is that the H1Z1 League was held in Las Vegas. <laughs> and you know what? That didn't go too fucking well. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I do like what uh, Esports Arena is doing, and I do like what WSOE is doing. I think WSOE is probably the bigger influence here. I mean, the Esports Arena and now Allied, and we're actually going to our actual first What a great segue! Show. Good You know what? We're, we're 15 minutes in, and it's, <laughs> this is definitely not getting done in hours. So Ryan was planning on trying to get it done in an hour. There's absolutely no, no chance that happened. No, we'll do it. We'll do it. Goals. Yeah. Alright. So yeah, that's a good segue into our first topic, which is uh, the Allied Esports stuff. I know, Ryan, you're like super into it. You tweeted like a whole thread about it as well. I think it's good that we bring it up because it happened during the holidays, so a lot of people probably missed it and uh, don't even know that this whole thing even exists. Agreed, yes. Uh, so this is the part that I forgot to uh, set up in... <laughs> X split, but that's okay. Okay. Oh, now that we have some people watching, I thank you for me uh, remembering, making me remember Ryan. Um, for those of you who don't Here, know what's look, going I on, this, I just this is basically our, our scuff show. This is untitled. We don't got lower thirds. We don't got fucking graphics. I'm First off, say I that. got a lower third. Ryan and Zorin. Ryan and Zorin <laughs> want to do this show, and they didn't want to ask me. They didn't want to have me involved at all because I'm too flaky, <laughs> and I'm never going to show up on time, which I will say, very fair points the there. But before we got on the show, that's why you're on the show. Into this. You know, <laughs> Zoreen shows up late, and Ryan can't get the fucking show working until an hour later. Who oh. was here on time? <laughs> Who had all the shit set up properly ready for the show to begin? Me. Who's got my drink ready early? I did. Not these two. Just want to put that out there. Is that is that like your thing? You showed up to the first show super early so that you yes. can rub this in our faces in the very yeah. first episode. I'm sorry, I had a day job and Ryan had technical difficulties because <laughs> he had to wait for me to get back from my day job and set this whole thing up. Anyway, I'm glad you got that out of your system, yes. Rod. Thank now, you, Zorin. Back to the topic. Yes, back <laughs> to the topic at hand. Uh, let me switch to this. Ugh. 
God, this is we're going to need a different setup next time. Esports Observer reports uh, Allied Esports World Poker Tour merged to create Allied Esports Entertainment. Uh, the TLDR basically states that uh, Black Ridge Acquisition Corpony, uh, Corporation is acquiring these two companies from R Game International. R Game owned both uh, Allied Esports and World Poker Tour, and basically these guys are joining up together for a 118 million. Uh, sorry, 11.6 million shares at a $118 million valuation USD. Um, this is, you know, this news came out around the holidays. I searched my Twitter feed uh, high and low to try to find people talking about this. I didn't find anybody talking about it. I even at replied slasher. It was definitely <laughs> morning time on the East Coast. And I was like, hey, I said at slasher, number one esports consultant, where is the breakdown and info on this merger slash acquisition? To which he uh, replied nothing. So then <laughs> I had to make my own summary uh, so that I can maybe someday overtake the number one esports consultant. I mean, I'm not number one yet, but maybe this summary that 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 I wrote that I will recap for you guys uh, here. Um, basically, uh, parent company of esports is merging with World Poker Tour, branding as Allied Esports Entertainment. The company is supposed to the transaction is supposed to finish in Q1 of 2019. And then uh, it will be publicly traded. Black Ridge uh, acquisition is already publicly traded. You can search for the stock ticker uh, BRAC, and then that will, uh, if you, that will turn into the new uh, Allied Esports stock. Uh, I don't know after they finish the the transaction. Uh, they number three. Uh, they have a hundred million dollars in cash because uh, Black Ridge came with that kind of money and bought all those shares. They, uh, number four, they are building flagship arenas that will cost $20 million each, one in Europe and one in Asia. For context and reference, the eSports Arena location in Las Vegas, which is inside of the Luxor, is considered the, flag the current flagship arena. And uh, what I found most interesting uh, is that their model is based on three verticals. Number one, producing uh, in-person events. Number two, producing content and selling sponsorships uh, on the content. And the third one is a subscription service that will leverage World Poker Tour expertise to run online tournaments with cash prizes and unique experiences like playing with your favorite streamers, kind of like what they set up with Ninja and uh, Esports Arena when it when it opened, and finally the 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 other part that I found really interesting uh, was that they got one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in sponsorship money from Purple Mattresses and Red Bull for the Ninja launch event. All of this uh, tells me uh, that this is a huge this is a potentially huge deal for esports at large and really shed a lot of insight on where the pop where like the big you know the big real uh, venture capital money thinks the opportunity and value lies because you know of course we've seen tons of different people get invested in you know making teams and all that stuff but this is kind of one of the first big plays that's let's say real estate and content centric what do you guys think? Um, okay, so firstly, to like take two steps backwards, so Allied Esports, they own, like, they're most known for owning all of the esports arena locations in North America. Is that correct? Yeah, and now, let's say, rolling out their affiliate program to roll, it, roll up other esports arena into their larger right. banner. Okay, and do they currently have any content plays? I don't think that like they have any, right? Or do they own any websites? Do they have any know? content plays? Uh, my understanding, based on watching their forty-minute investor presentation, which was fascinating, is that they're spending millions of dollars on you know equipment 
to produce a lot of this content in-house based on the events that they're estimating to you know be able to pull off like 80 events per month or something like or 80 events per year or something like that okay um, so they're let's say doing a lot of the content themselves i mean i'd personally like to know if esports arena is making money i'm not sure if in that report um it showed if these venues are profitable or not. I, I really am interested if they are. I I don't see I mean, how they possibly could be at this point. It's part of a larger... Like, I don't think they could be either. It's part of a larger comeback of PC cafes in North America, where PC gaming cafes kind of died, and arcade culture also went down. But now it's like... it's At least for PC gaming cafes, that's had a resurgence because PC gaming is so big arcade culture is kind of like tied it's all like a it's all like a one encompassing thing like you have a venue that has all of the above it has arcade culture and it has pcs and it has console shit inside of it i think generally as someone who lives in new york there's something called waypoint cafe i know the owner pretty well and he's profitable for his venue and it's relatively new um i'd say it's two years old right, and he has a the, new the scale venue coming soon so, so yeah, think, of, think of eSports Arena Las Vegas as the existing flagship sh uh, store or location. And so, but the LA, the LA event was the flagship. The Vegas uh, one is the new kind of. It's much bigger. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just relaying the way that they categorized it in the oh, okay. in the investor presentation. So, if we right. think of Vegas as flagship, and then Europe and Asia as us. Uh, forthcoming flagship arenas at the $20 million price point, I think it's highly unlikely that Esports Arena Las Vegas is, you know, around that. I mean, they probably spent like a similar amount of money. I don't see how they could have possibly made that back. It's been like eight months. But I think the bigger, they don't really need to be profitable because they got $100 million in cash after this acquisition. Yeah. I, I think, like, if you're thinking about their business model, right, like, their money isn't coming from people, like, like everyday people like you and me walking in and paying, like, what, the $5 venue fee to play games there for a night, right? Their money is probably coming from, like, the big publisher events that they host there, like the Big Ninja thing, or when Esports Arena hosts some sort of, like, launch event for a game or promotes some sort of other event, like, I think that's where they probably make the bulk of their money, and like for a venue, Currently, that's yeah. probably the smarter, like the smarter play. Yeah, yeah, I know that you know the esports arena in Vegas. It was built at its size to bring in publishers and developers and host their events at their venue, which I do think is important. I mean, we see as esports continues to grow, owning the physical space that the events are put in seems like it's a pretty important thing i like each of the developers now have built their own shit so you have riot that has their own studio and you have now ogn is technically an event organizer and they built their own studio and la and blizzard's kind of renting out the tonight the old tonight show you know thing for the overwatch league right. for example but i do think if you're not riot or blizzard you're probably not going to build your own arena so if you do own your own arena like esports arena has Renting it out to the other every other developer and publisher is probably a smart move. I I don't, but for me, Zorin, it still feels like the bread and butter has to be normal people coming in and paying money to use the stuff. It can't always be events. There aren't nah. there aren't enough events that if you don't include Blizzard and you don't include Riot and you, because they have their own deals with certain venues, I really don't think there are enough events to pay for the venue all year if you don't have normal people coming in to pay. For Agreed, and that's why what makes their whole merger acquisition interesting is that it's in-person events, content, and the sponsorship of said content, plus the, uh, the, the platform, their subscription service platform that they are building that's gonna launch like 2020 or something. What is that? So it's going to be, I think this is where the World Poker Tour, um, you know, expertise and experience comes into play because of the infrastructure that World Poker Tour has built over the years to funnel online poker players uh, and give them a path towards in-person events in Vegas. So oh. I'm imagining a subscription service 
that probably includes access to content and tournaments because it mentions specifically, you know, that people that subscribe to the service would potentially be able to play with their favorite streamers and pro players and personalities and stuff. And that sort of uh, subscription service for esports and tournaments and, and as a platform doesn't really exist right now. That's interesting. I wonder if like that would actually be profitable because as like influencers get more and more popular and things are kind of like the wild wild west now and I'm like risking going off on a tangent by saying all this stuff but like influencers starting to charge more and more for their time, right? Like if you are publisher or an event organizer and you want to have a big streamer or a big pro player be come be part of your event, it's going to cost you a lot. So I wonder how profitable Definitely. this like subscription thing actually will be. Like to have a pro player or a streamer who is famous on your books to be able to do something like that. Well, I mean, I don't if, think they'll get. They're go not going to get the top tier. Esports Arena won't get any of the top tier. Well, they'll they'll get middle of the road, uh, middle middle of the road players that don't have like uh, negotiating power or that don't have leverage to get the like better deals. To do like I to, can't to do I personally online... cannot see <laughs> Esports Arena won't get fucking anyone rep no one of like big name. Okay, no. first off, I don't I don't started see it just to play devil's advocate. I don't give a shit either way, but you can't really <laughs> say that they're not gonna, they're not able to get like top tier talent because they started this thing in vegas with ninja or i'm sorry yeah, is he not good enough sorry was there <laughs> no 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 he... it's true it's true yeah so that, that event went really well yeah so if you could do that you know obviously they already have they at, not like you know, they already part of the top program of the top. though it just well there isn't a, the there isn't a there isn't All a program the right there isn't a program yet what what I'm saying is that they're saying that they can get talent to participate some way as a value add is, as part right. of the subscription service. I mean, at this point, it remains to be seen whether or not all of these events would, let's say, need to take place in an esports arena venue or whether mm -hmm. some of the events could just take place online. Like, for example, you know win some kind of content subscribers are automatically entered into a contest to win a chance to play with ninja online and if you score in the top whatever 10 20 percent then you advance to some other thing so that eventually you can come to las vegas to to vegas not manhattan beach and and play with with ninja at esports arena in person wow Magic. I'm I mean, sold. You know, so 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 take that analogy and then insert your favorite game and your favorite streamer and then recreate it. And I I think that there's a lot of value in there. And I don't really see why they wouldn't be able to pull it off because if you got a hundred million dollars in the bank, uh you know, you can make a few things happen. Yeah, let's spend it all recklessly. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, but, to you know, it, it seemed like the entire thing was a little reckless. But now that I have a better, when I was just thinking about it as a venue, but now right. with like the content play and the subscription platform play, it, things are like way more interesting now. Do, that part do actually mention? doesn't matter at all to me. Which part? Neither of those. I don't care. I don't think either of those are going to bring in the money. I think they're both going to. You think the money is in the? In the you think the money is in the uh, events? The actual venue. I mean, that's what the, that's how they started to begin with. the The physical space is what you need. That's what they're renting out for a ton of money to Red Bull to pay for Ninjas. Fucking right, but like you said the earlier, place. there's just not enough events to to make that. You know, sustainable. Well, you know what the the for how big the Vegas pyramid fucking thing is. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, I mean, they went all out. Okay, the one in L.A. is pretty modest, is it not? The one uh, in L.A. is yeah. yeah. It's it's not as the original, the original one. Yeah, the original one is different. But like... the other thing is that the the Vegas one was the LAX uh, nightclub before. So like all of. Uh, I mean, obviously, they added in a ton of 
gear and stuff, but like, let's say the structure of the venue seemed like it was already, you know, established. I just mean like, like they're, they're really trying to hit a, hit a home run in Vegas with how big of a venue that they rented out to now Absolutely. brand new sports arena compared to their more modest approach of going, you know, building the thing in, L in LA and then expanding it. They have one in like, they have a few now, right? Is there one in NorCal Yeah, there's too? one in, there's one in Oakland. Oh, I think there you go. Oakland, yeah, somewhere like yeah. in NorCal. But... Oakland, Santa Ana, Vegas, with the two new, and you know they have like affiliate venues in like China or whatever. And so, then, oh, yeah. that's also another problem. I think they're going to have severe issues when trying to go into Asia. I really do not see it going well unless they have a whole type of local help in China or Korea. I do not see that fucking working out. I, I think know. they already have a, a, a an assortment of. Chinese affiliated esports venues. Okay, well that makes sense. Did they mention in the presentation if like the content and the subscription thing like they're that they're launching will be branded esports arena as well? Or is that going to be like se completely separate? You know, I th uh the the platform is going to be called God, it's something with something with a C. I for I forget. The platform is called something else. Um, okay. And I, Interesting. Yeah, I don't know about the content. I it, it seemed like it was going to be. I think the the move eventually is for them to make it so that when they're trying to do non like what, when they're not doing like publisher events, you know, when they're just doing like normal like I don't know day to day or weekend events that are probably at this point like mostly community driven. Uh, I think at some point all of that content is going to need to be. Uh, on the esports arena, whatever channel, uh, or under esports arena control, with either them producing it or, yeah, I guess with with them producing it because otherwise, um, you know, they're going to be missing out on a lot of content. Uh, like specifically, let's say you know all the fighting game stuff that's going on in Santa Ana and Oakland with Wednesday night fights. I mean, all that stuff right now is on the Level Up channel. And, you know, it might be to the point where the relationship is established, so they just kind of let that rock. But I think it would be, I think it would be silly of them not to try to control all of the content that was coming out of there regularly. Uh, like, let's say new stuff that might be developed, you know, going forward. So have it all like branded like esports arena basically well, yeah, because to drive yeah. interest back to the actual venue itself. Not yeah, just that makes the, sense. Not just the venue, but the channel too, because you know the the channel that you're using to broadcast is certainly going to influence how many people are watching. So you know when you compare, let's say the the level up channel, which has been going since what 2009, 2010. Uh, when you compare that to like let's say the esports arena channel or like let's say esports arena santa ana channel i mean level up channel the level up channel's got to be like way bigger uh so i don't know i think it's gonna get interesting in the next couple of years in the you know esports real estate venue space all right you heard it here first folks Allied esports is going to be the next big thing in the esports venue space. Yeah, you literally heard it only here first because no one really. No one else is talking about it. Yeah, no Not even the number one. Enough. And Ryan wants well, everyone to care. Oh, okay? I don't. Oh, I don't. Really care. I literally. That's the point of this show. <laughs> I don't care if anybody else cares. I thought it was the the other part that I that sorry we didn't really talk about, but I think is like super interesting, is that the company that acquired them, Black Ridge Acquisitions. Um, they're already traded publicly traded, so once the merger completes, then there will be a stock ticker change, and essentially you'll be able to buy stock in Allied Esports. I personally find that fascinating, fascinating because there's not a lot of companies that, uh, like, let's say you wanted to invest in esports, like your options are actually quite narrow, but yeah, this actually sure. kind of opens it up, and so. I mean, this. I'm not a. I'm not a investment advisor, but this is one of the first opportunities, as far as I can tell. So, is that if for any of you who are looking to, you know, maybe pull the rope from the if you have Activision stocks, stop right there. 
<laughs> um, get your allied esports stocks. Don't worry, you'll be back there in no time. If you had Bitcoin and if you had Activision <laughs> stocks since last year, it's all right. It's all right. You'll be okay. Maybe uh, get get in on these allied esports first <laughs> first openings. You'll be right back in the game or whatever the fuck they <laughs> have that shit. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Let's see. Next topic. Next topic. Can we do? Can we? Can we do the the rod one? Sure. The rod one. The one that Rod volunteered. Okay. I like that headline. Sure. Uh, let me switch over to this thing. Ah, the headline of the week. The elephant in the room. Why we should never forget this particular Overwatch <laughs> embarrassment. Richard Lewis coming through with a attention-grabbing headline uh, that I I think is quite funny. I uh, applaud it. Props yeah. to the editor who did that. <laughs> yeah, whoever wrote that headline is is a genius. Um, that, that was either Kevin Hitt uh, or it might have just been Richard himself which it, I would definitely could imagine that would yes, be the case yes. credit to uh, vpesports.com where you can find it Rod why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about oh, do what I have happened to? do you how much do you know Ryan or Zareen can, can, can you get Zareen you probably uh, know more than Ryan I want to see where Ryan where are you up to speed are you on the how much of the don't give a shit <laughs> level are you are you up like on a here and a top really haven't given any of a shit um so just to recap for people who maybe like me live in a cave uh there was a an overwatch player a mysterious overwatch player that appeared on the amateur circuit swiftly rose to the top uh supposedly was a 17 year old girl then I guess she got like pressured or bullied and then withdrew from the league. And then it was exposed that she wasn't a 17 year old girl at all. She was just, uh, you know, some pro Overwatch player masquerading as, as a 17 year old girl playing Overwatch. Is that, is that a, uh, accurate? that is reasonably accurate um <laughs> it does leave out a few things especially considering the article that richard wrote addresses. oh i'm just the recapping media, like the, the media what actually happened well, not no, the, that, the media blow up not the media that blow up. is pretty good that is, the, the media blow up is like pretty fucking important here that is pretty good there are a few things that i've learned that are in addition to to that some details here and there but i sure. say that's reasonable tell reasonably us good. tell us about the details um uh, okay Okay, there there are there are a few things. One, uh, the dude who's been playing under the Ellie Battle.net account and who's using the Twitter and the Discord does okay, according to him, as even up until today I have not been able to verify this is true, he does have a friend or a girlfriend or whatever the fuck happened named Ellie, who this was all inspired over. And she actually was... <laughs> he knew, a, he knew a, gay, a girl named Ellie once. Okay, got it. <laughs> no, no. This girl was the original person talking for him. He, the, there is an Ellie, okay? There okay. actually, it, from what I can tell, there is an Ellie. She wasn't harassed. And she didn't get part... She didn't get the, the abuse which started off this entire media fire to begin with. But there is an Ellie, which apparently is his friend, or might not be his friend anymore, that <laughs> was one of the first, because I don't know, I mean, I fucking would hope not, that was one of the first <laughs> girls that, like, spoke for him in-game to help him fake this whole thing to begin with. Now, I've tried to find Ellie. I cannot find her. I don't know her, you know, I don't know anything about her. Um, and he was in control of the Twitter and the Discord. So the social media accounts... And, like, her talking to people was him. And I think, like, a little bit of her. But I have never found her. I don't know where she is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on. Okay, so uh, so Ellie as a human exists, but she's yes. not actually that good at Overwatch. Got it. Okay. No, not not at all. No. Okay. Also was not harassed. It's also, important to throw that uh, out there. Huh? That is very important here. There was no woman 
named Ellie harassed. It was Punisher, this dude, under the Ellie Discord account and the Twitter account, which is a social media Okay. Which is what she had been using. The okay. LA internet entity was harassed, but sounds like this 17-year-old girl just, you know, probably split way, you know, parted ways. And so <laughs> yes. she didn't catch any of that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now let's get to Rod's favorite part. Right. Yeah. Tell us why this <laughs> tell us why this matters. Yeah. Uh yeah. Well, I mean there are there are like a few things here. Um one, and then the reason that Richard wrote this article today about why we shouldn't forget this, and is currently, yeah, it really is a pet peeve for me, is that, okay, I didn't pay attention to this story, like, when it, because, like, there was even a week or two ago before all this happened, someone even wrote on Reddit who punish, uh, who Ellie was, and that person was right. It just so happened that the person who wrote on Reddit who Ellie really was, was the same person that was harassing Ellie in the screenshots. <laughs> so no one actually took this person seriously, because the same dude that was, like, trying to dox Ellie and trying to, like, talk shit to her was a known asshole. A known, his name is Taunt. His, he's a griefer. I banned him from the Overwatch Discord. He's been banned off of Overwatch the game. He's been banned off of Twitter for being a piece of shit. He's like, he's like, a, he's like a racist and like a, like a sexist. He's like a just general asshole on the internet all the time. So when he wrote, like, Ellie's not real, it's actually Punisher, no, everyone's like, fuck you, Haunt. You're a piece of shit <laughs> asshole. And, and then he went on to harass, uh, harass Ellie because he tried to slide into Ellie's DMs because Han actually thought that Ellie was a girl, and Ellie turned him down, and because Punisher knew Haunt, because they're both griefing fuckheads, um, Punisher knew that this would be a good way to troll Haunt and post the screenshots on the Twitter of Ellie being harassed and having to step down from the team because of Haunt, who two weeks prior tried to expose him, and they know each other, and he thought it was funny. So this is how, like, the entire th thing started. And then after Ellie stepped down, you have professional journalists that are paid full-time money to be journalists and investigate stories about video games. Not check at all with the situation and how it would go. And it really started, I would say, like, a worldwide discussion on Twitter through the gaming and esports community. And I think Zorian could probably... Um, attest to this, uh, about the harassment that women get in video games and on the internet and in esports, which I think is, a, I do think this is a legitimate topic. I do think it's real. There are a bunch of dudes that don't think that women actually get harassed more than men on the internet and video games, and I think they're fucking fucking, I don't, I can't actually believe that, that people believe that. Um, but that discussion got overshadowed because Ellie, you know, it was all about Ellie having to step down from the team and a girl, a, a young girl under 18 being harassed by ass by douchebag men on the internet and then her having to step down and not getting the chance. So the entire discussion, which is important to have, was started by this. I didn't, as I was trying to start from the story, I didn't, like, pay attention to this very thing for, like, at least two weeks because I didn't really care so, so much. It was just a random person who wasn't even like a semi-pro player who got a chance to play in the second league of North American Overwatch, which if anyone that knows Overwatch means you're not getting into Overwatch League anyway, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. It's a fucking bad player. There's no reason for me to pay attention to this. And then two days before this story came out, I told another journalist, and I won't say who he or she is because... Um, I don't want to make them look bad. But I told them, because they were asking me about this story, I said, I don't know, but I am pretty sure this whole thing is really weird, and I'm leaning towards this is not a... This, is, this girl is not a real girl. Um, then a day or two later, all these stories come out. I spend one fucking hour, one fucking hour actually doing, like, investigating and talking to people, and I find that, no, it's not a fucking girl. Aspen says it on her stream, and then I get multiple women to send me messages with Punisher about how he asked all of them to talk for him during the game, which is fucking insane, I will say. It's actually crazy that he had multiple women talking for him in-game. Uh, the whole fucking thing is crazy. 
Uh, but really, out of all of the L's that people took in this situation, and everyone <laughs> took a fucking L, Ryan and Zareen. <laughs> Blizzard took an L because they're, they've are they been hit on like every side of their reputation and everything going on with that company. And you had two more days about sexual harassment in games talked about for Blizzard. The team who brought her on without like looking into her or who she was or what she was doing or her name or her age or anything the entire overwatch community who all fucking bought it no one asked any questions and the one person that ended up leaking the whole thing they all shunned because he is rightfully an asshole don't get me wrong and then last but not least the media who made this a nationwide issue something that is important i think it is a very important issue to talk about harassment that women get online and in games and that i do believe it is real and they made it a fucking joke it was a fucking joke because this dude did it for the lulls he did it to piss people off he did it to grieve people and he did it to troll people not only did he troll like pro players which was his original intention of like only to troll the pros he trolled the whole fucking media he trolled the whole community he trolled like hundreds of thousands of people by by doing this and the media's responsibility is to tell the truth and to investigate things like this and they did not do a good job at all so they turned a serious issue into a joke and they once again fucked up a story within esports which they are now consistently doing over there at kotaku and polygon which have been two websites that i've complained about so much <laughs> uh, i know i'm like this is like a long rant here but Really, this is why Richard wrote the article. Out of all the fucking fucked up things about this story, and there are a lot of them, the media and their responsibility and how they've handled like covering esports and, and how they look at stories has really been a consistent mess, and this is just the latest one of them not knowing what the fuck they're doing. Okay, so as the number one esports consultant... <laughs> I almost used the word journalist, but you're not, you, you know... <laughs> You didn't no say journalism. Yeah, right, exactly. How would you, in your previous life as an esports journalist, have covered it? The same way that I covered it <laughs> on Twitter, except they would have wrote it on a website. And which... it would have been literally the same thing. Okay, so which website would you have written it on? <laughs> Not Kotaku. Does, does that really matter, though? Like, what's well, the we got? Kinda, yes. Uh, I mean... Yeah, it would not be for Kotaku, and it would not be for Polygon, because I will not work for those two companies. I don't believe that what they're doing at either of them has been a net positive for video games. And there are good journalists at both, and I like people at both of these companies, but they have definitely fucked it up when it comes to their coverage of esports. It looks like they have no idea like how the fucking internet works <laughs> or, or, or something. Like To really not have any suspicion about this random person that got top five in the ladder randomly shows up within months to not, and it, it hadn't they pretend they're saying they're a 17 year old girl to not be like in your head hmm i don't i don't know like that's really not gonna pop into any of your minds no matter how much of a feminist you are or no matter how much you want women to uh progress in video games and esports and become pro players you have to have a brain about the situation logically about what might be happening in, in certain times. And now I have lived through multiple issues in my life where men have pretended to be women in esports. Multiple times. Okay, this is not the first fucking time a guy has pretended to be a woman in esports. We've even have a, we've even had a writer. There was even an esports journalist named Anne Prague, oh, who was a fucking <laughs> dude pretending to be a female esports journalist. So this is not like a new thing that's been going on, let alone in esports on the internet. People, dudes, have been pretending to be women on the internet for a really long time because they're fucking weird or they're manipulative or they're doing it for the lulls and because they know it's easy to troll people because people are so fucking gullible but of anyone that should not be trolled it's national media but i say this and today there's a story about the wall street journal getting trolled and they, they actually wrote a whole story about laura loomer and they got trolled which is nothing we're not we're going to talk about but you know what it doesn't fucking matter you could be at one of the largest journalistic um editorial publications in the whole world and still be duped because you can't use your fucking brain. So I would say overall, I would love for journalists and video games 
who cover the space of games and online games to know that online gaming is a weird place and weird fucking shit happens all the time, especially in esports. And if something seems weird and shady, probably more often than not, it's not a feel good story of something happening. Something odd is happening in the background. And you just have to know, like, that is a reasonable thing. And to try to create a whole. I don't know, like, especially issues around culture and, and social issues like harassment, which are important issues. This is what fucks up important discussions for me about these topics when there are stories that are blown up agree egregiously. So essentially what you're like saying that. is that you're the number one esports consultant. <laughs> you could be the number Jeez. one journalist. And everybody else covering these stories in mainstream media or gaming press needs to get on your level. Richard is great. Richard Lewis, the, the writer of this article. He's right. done well, too. He didn't get duped because he's not a fucking idiot. He could use his brain and for five minutes or five seconds or whatever it takes and realize, hmm, you know what? Probably not. I mean, to play devil's advocate, they will probably... I mean, like, you know, looking at it from their perspective, it's like, hey, look, they probably really wanted to be believe that there is a talented young female Overwatch player out there, and, you know, she's not given the same opportunity. And let's face it, like, women on the internet are always questioned whether or not they are actually women, so they were like, you know, maybe cross their mind to be like, hey, let's not be one of those people to ask, are you really a girl? And, like, try and show support for her in their weird, messed up way. Like, I agree with you. Like, I think there should have been better investigation done before certain things were published. And I know that Richard covered that in his article. He said, you know, like, they reached out for comment and they never got a response. So they ran the story anyway without it. You know, stuff like that shouldn't really fly at publications, especially, like, publications that are supposed to be doing the bulk of the reporting in esports that we have now, right? So... But to play devil's advocate, there's also, like, you need to be sensitive about, like, how Ellie might have felt being questioned about, like, who she was. And, like, you know, you're talking to someone who was supposedly an underage, like, you know, a minor as well. So you have to tread carefully about that as well. So, I don't know. It's just, like, there's this whole thing. But overall, like, I do agree with you. It sucks that the discussion becomes more about, like, how the story was handled rather than, like, the issues themselves. Hmm. Well, maybe it was a good learning lesson for all of the <laughs> journalists that did get fooled, you know, that maybe something like a Skype call, you know, like a simple conversation could have, you know, helped to, you know, eliminate some of the uncertainty. But like, uh, I, I, I don't think so, Ryan, because none of them apologized. Uh, they all doubled down. None of them retracted their story. I've had I've had DMs with several of those journalists. None of them felt like they what they did was wrong. I told them they're all fucking idiots, and this is why I shit on them publicly all the time, because they can't admit that they fucked up. They can't admit that they fucked up. Like they've been shown several times that they fucked up, and they can't just say like. Like, all right, we got it wrong. We shouldn't have printed this. They, they, they look. They really did Zorian's justification, and I'm not saying that it's a wrong justification. I really know that, like, one, you have to tread uh, carefully here because she is an underage girl, and you don't want to always assume that it is not a woman on the other end. Um, but it really feels more like people really wanted so badly for it to be true. They wanted the 17-year-old girl who is top five ranked on the ladder, <laughs> who has come out of nowhere to be a fucking prodigy in the Overwatch community, to be true, to show that women can play at the highest level, and that there's another woman besides Gaguri out there, especially in North America, like the first really, really incredibly good North American women. Because there are some good North American female players, like Barcode isn't playing uh, those who follow Overwatch for like the first season of, of the Bay and Overwatch and I've known her for like a real long time and she's great um, but people really wanted the story to be true and then people wanting the story to be true took over their mind of <laughs> like how they thought about the situation and if you are a professional journalist and your job is to look at things and write about them and report on them objectively you cannot let your personal feelings on how you want the world to be and how you want to progress the world and make things better 
interfere with what is actually happening in whatever you're covering. And I really think that that is a major problem with certain journalists at these publications, especially with the way that they cover a lot of issues which have intertwined culture and race and gender and, you know, that, that those types of things. I think the... I think the real the real tragedy is whenever there actually is a 17 year old girl from North America that's actually really, 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 really strong. She's going to have a hell of a time proving that she is legit. <laughs> no, it really is. All this did was make it worse for like other women now. Now, whenever there really is an, a, a woman who's like grinding through the ladder, coming kind of coming out of nowhere as a new player it is going to be twice as hard or 10 times as hard for her to prove herself. So congratulations, everyone, on fucking everything up. <laughs> the, the team, Haunt, who harassed Ellie, Punisher, the guy who pretended to be Ellie and manipulated several women to talk for him in the fucking game, the media who blew the entire thing up, and the entire community who bought everything. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, everyone. For your time. <laughs> Amazing. Great I'm job. glad we got to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's great that we covered that because now we get to move on to the next exciting topic. Uh, no, can we do yours before? No, no, yeah, let's do, your, let's do yours. Zuri. Yeah, let's do Zorian's, please. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, so... Tencent, which who is, if you don't know who Tencent is, they're one of the biggest companies in China. They own like almost like all the big gaming publishers. They own Riot Games. They own a large percentage of Epic Games, um, who of course make Fortnite. So you have League of Legends, Fortnite under their banner. They own like a whole bunch of other like internet properties as well in Asia. I don't want to get into that, but basically Tencent is like a chi Chinese conglomerate. They're super powerful. And they recently joined forces with Riot Games, which is, it's kind of weird to say join forces since they own them anyway, but they joined forces with Riot Games to create um, a joint Chinese esports venture called TJ Sports. And I think this is a super big deal because TJ Sports is going to um, start by focusing on all things League of Legends business related in China. And um, that includes like organizing the tournament, talent management, venues, all sorts of stuff. And um, <clears throat> they also like announced like their partners and all that. Like it was basically a really, really big like announcement coming out of China and kind of also... I don't know like how you two feel about it, but it makes me feel uncomfortable in that Tencent just continues to grow and grow in power and make these big power moves. And they're like, I just feel like they're constantly on the cusp of controlling such a large population of esports that it's going to at some point get like really gray area and things are already kind of corrupt in China from like, you know, the sources and bits that I hear like here and there. So just throwing it out there, we should all be aware about Tencent taking over the world. And that's important. <laughs> what do you two think about it? Well, you know what, Zareen? Good thing there are no companies in America that own, like, everything. And they're uh, <laughs> certain... <laughs> not sure of being serious or not. <laughs> Good thing there's no telecom companies that own, like, the whole fucking internet. And every web platform. And every content creator. And, like, literally everything, Zareen. Yeah, but Glad like, that doesn't you... happen. Yeah, but, like, North America's pool is, like, this much of, like, China's, right? Like, China is so huge and so large that, like, it's almost like comparing, I don't know what's a good comparison, like, an elephant to an ant, you know, like, that kind of thing. So, I just think that, like, more people should be aware of it, that this is happening, and not a lot of, like, if you're, like, living in your cave, per se, like, you don't really know or pay attention to news like this, because you're like, who the, who the fuck is Tim? Like, what is happening? Like, why should I care about TJ Sports? Like, who is TJ Sports? Well, now you know. <laughs> I mean, I actually made a tweet about this maybe, I don't know, a few months ago. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tencent owns 100% of Riot, which is League of Legends, 80% of Supercell, which is Clash Royale, 48% of Epic, which is fucking Fortnite, 10% of Bluehole, which is PUBG, and then 5% of Ubisoft, and 5% of Activision Blizzard. Not to mention everything that Tencent 
owns and publishes on their own in China, which I believe is like Dungeon Fighter and like a whole bunch of other stuff, which they publish themselves. Mm -hmm. So they really do kind of own everything. Uh, <laughs> um, which, yeah, I, I think it is kind of worrying. Um, you know, more worrying was that even though they own all this shit, did you know, because I listened into an investor call, I think it was a month ago, mm -hmm. that they've made less money this year than they did in the previous quarter. They made less fucking money. With with Epic making like $3 billion in profit, they still made less money because of the recent government restrictions that were imposed on them for video games and how, how they can be rated and how they can oh, be sold. Now, those restrictions were, I believe, taken back within the last week or two, and that bumped Tencent up. But Tencent was even put in a position by the Chinese government of less profits because the Chinese government was trying to crack down on games in general. But Tencent's lobbyists, along with uh, NetEase, who are the two, the two big companies in China that own fucking everything. Um, also, I think Douyu. Yes. I think I believe Tencent owns one of the streaming platforms, and I believe Douyu is independent, or maybe um, it's, Huya. it's either Huya or Douyu is independent, and one and the other one is owned by by Tencent. But anyway, so Tencent lobbyists and Huya and, and NetEase were able to get the Chinese government restrictions to lessen on games that are sold with blood and gore and all that other nonsense. So profits should rise back up. I actually think, in terms of the League of Legends thing, it was a general good move did you did you see the ariel horn thing uh, oh, no. ariel no. horn is the main executive producer for riot games for the league of legends world championships i believe the the league of legends lcs and the world finals is the best production in all of esports i believe it's better than overwatch league i better i believe it's better than the majors Fair and enough. the dota majors all of them i believe the lcs is the best production in all of esports and ariel horn has been the director and the executive head, the one leading the charge there. He officially announced today he's he's stepping down as executive producer, and he is going to be senior strategic advisor of TJ Sports with Tencent and Riot instead. So he is taking a position from Riot into now Tencent, this Tencent Riot thing, which I do think it like it does show that there there is there's going to be a shift of personnel that work for Riot that might go now work for Tencent directly in this new partnership um, that they have. So I think it is going to be pretty important. We're, most people won't see it because most Westerners still don't know what the fuck Tencent does or is <laughs> most of the time, even though they fucking own everything. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty important for League of Legends esports going forward. Yeah, I wonder if like their push for LPL, you know, it being like the Chinese League scene, which is a totally separate like regional bracket to like the NA LCS and the EU, if that will kind of be, I feel like weird in the sense that, you know, like you're the controlling company and you, there, there is like the whole, like, are you going to favor LPL over like NA LCS or EU or some sort of like, you know, weird thing there. So I don't know, like it, it's kind of hard to prove that kind of stuff. Right. But I'm still curious and, I think it's important to raise that as like a thought to the people. Yeah, it seems like, you know, we're sort of running into, you know, uh, monopoly territory here where oftentimes, at least in, I have no idea what like the uh, antitrust laws are in, in China, but, you know, at least in America, once corporations start to get too big and then start acquiring competitors in space then generally like the government will like break that up to prevent you know monopolies um with the lpl it seems like now they're going to be able to control um basically the entire thing top to bottom which could make it so that uh you know let's say players aren't able to band together in some sort of players union type of situation as well mm. as you know if you're also um you know because now you're running the tournament you're controlling the game and you have control of the talent and the venues so it seems like we're 
heading into very dangerous territory kind of similar to how it it seems like it is out here in north america with league as well as overwatch um but this is yeah, sort of well, like the publishers the, like have all the power like they control everything yeah i don't really see that being the way that it always will be because at some point there will be as esports grows and you know becomes more legitimized there's definitely going to be some government interaction um to try to prevent situations like these because i think a lot of times um the way that it's been shaping up is you know the players really don't have uh, a voice or an outlet that's separate from the you know the publisher that is controlling the whole thing i mean this is really like part of the problem with like super centralized esports that's all publisher driven as opposed to you know, community driven. So I mean, but Tencent's owned the own Riot this whole time. I mean, they're just starting this new joint venture, probably to easier organize the esports stuff that they do. I mean, I still believe that esports has been a, a loss for Riot. Like, it's still lost money, no matter. Like the esports stuff itself, they, they they probably I don't even know how much they can correlate, uh, how much money they've made from like the like using esports as a promotion for selling skins. I don't actually know if they did they know mm -hmm. how to like quantify that together. But the, in terms of like how much money they made from sponsorships and whatever back, um, they've lost money. So maybe it's it's just a trying to reorganize that to not lose as much money within Tencent. Because Tencent's owned Riot this whole time anyway. It's not like they didn't own Riot before and now they do. Right. They've owned Riot this whole time. Nonetheless. Yeah. Well, they... I don't know. They... They own... They own Riot, but, like, the thing about the... Let's say the expenses related to esports within these publishers is that they're basically all all looking at esports as a loss leader so that um it's just coming out of the the marketing budget but i mean obviously the money that they make whether they can track it and trace it back to let's say specific esports broadcasts or events or whatever obviously is outweighing what they're spending otherwise they wouldn't mm. keep doing it um, so, you know, I think it's just, it, it it's going to continue this way for the foreseeable future. And it's only going to be once there's actual government, uh, oversight, which is obviously still a long ways away that these things are going to change, but it's going to get really ugly at some point, um, with players not wanting to, you know, players getting fined for, you know, doing things that they shouldn't be. And all this stuff is going to keep on happening. Um, and look, yo, to be fair, as much as Tencent's, like, over, like, ruling over everyone and their monopolization of everything, Riot's gone through a fucked up year. I would say Riot has had one of the worst <laughs> years it's ever had, from the game being fucked up to fucking sexual harassment uh, within the workplace and executives farting on people and all types of crazy <laughs> shit is going on at that fucking company. You know, maybe it's for maybe it's for the fucking best, all right? Because they That's got true. problems over there. Maybe like that Tencent like was reacting to all this, being like, "Look, you guys can't get your shit together over in <laughs> yeah, North America. I kinda... We're gonna start our own league here." Like, <laughs> I kind of think so. <laughs> that's that's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting take for sure. I mean, to be fair, LCS and LE, the LEC, like splitting up uh, NA and EU LCS into LCS and LEC, looks pretty good. Like everything that they've done mm -hmm. so far for the launch of LCS and the they, they announced the LEC, which is the Europe version details today, looks pretty solid. So they're fucking up less. I don't know if that's Riot themselves fucking up less, or that is actually Tencent like helping them fuck <laughs> up less over there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, franchising was a, a smart move on their part, I think, and has overall yeah. helped everyone. For sure. 
Okay, let's see. Moving on. Uh, One hour. Sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. Do you got what? Do you guys want to talk about? It's your pick, Ryan. Sonic Fox, ADGQ, True Sight. What is True Sight? Uh, we can fucking. It's a the Dota documentary that came out today. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. So um, I probably wouldn't okay, have okay. I would just say it's really fucking cool for the CGI. It might be the coolest like documentary in esports that I've ever seen because of because Valve used Source Filmmaker, which they fucking create to can make some crazy CGI to intertwine with the story. Like they took the actual gameplay of the tournament and they made CGI of the tournament gameplay. Wait, what? So the and exact same things that they did in free to play? No, uh, yes, but it looks even better now. <laughs> okay. But it looks even better. I mean, it looked amazing in free to play, but sure, maybe we can uh, check it out, and talk about it next week, and why it's important. I mean, I'll put a link um, to like one of the okay, one of the things. But uh... all right, so you want to talk about Papa Dog? Pop Dog? Wait, I thought you were gonna pick a topic. You want? Hey, the... Oh, pick... I. I, I, I picked my topic. That the the Allied Esports thing. That was... Yeah, now it's back to you. Yeah, and then I picked LA, and then and then I Zareen picked, picked Tencent TJ. and now it's back to you, Ryan. Come on. <laughs> I'm just trying to be considerate, okay? Look at Oh, I appreciate at, your consideration. Look at look, look at Mr. Esports. I don't know how you guys were doing things back in the day. But in the Gutex, you know, rule <laughs> in the Gutex book of hosting you know, you got to at least give the option to the guests before trying to control the entire thing. Guess, guess one passes. Guess two? <laughs> Does guess two pass? Yes, I pass. Let's do it. Go, Ryan. Both of the guests pass on your show, Ryan. Okay, cool. Okay. I want to hear what you want to make. Let's talk. It's a toss-up between Sonic Fox and Pop Dog. I think Ooh. I think that Pop Dog is more interesting to me personally, but there might okay. be. Okay, what we'll do? I think Sonic Fox is topical because, like, where uh, at least Ryan and I are from the FGC, right? And so, you know, seeing this kind of blow up has been interesting, or seeing Sonic Fox blow up has been interesting. He's now like one of the most prime representatives of the FGC now out there, whether we like it or not. Okay, let's talk about. Okay, let's talk about this, uh, Rod. It was your headlining headline. I'm paraphrasing because there's not actually an article linked. Uh, Sonic Fox, uh, Sonic Fox gets hashtag I'm gay to trend worldwide on Twitter. Yes, powerful, very powerful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I mean, since we're on the cross counter show, I probably don't have to explain as much about Sonic Fox or like who the fuck he is as opposed to normal. So I'm gonna see most people know who he is and like what he does and like how he's how he's good at video games and fighting games and shit. Uh, so he won, you know, Esports Player of the Year at the Game Awards. He made a speech that was lauded, I would say, by most people. I thought it was great. You had another group of people on the internet, including some gamers, who found it too political, and they found it patronizing, and they thought if anyone gave a similar speech about, like, because he said fuck Republicans at the end, and, if any, and people thought, if anyone said fuck Democrats, that that would have gone totally different. And I, probably they were right. They probably would have gotten, like, an insane amount of hate if someone had done that. Um... So he already gotten himself in a similar type of controversy in terms of his role in the larger gaming community, how people view him. Uh, there was a Twitter user, I think he's a YouTuber, and he does, like, comedy skits, uh, who he says he's also gay, and he goes through Sonic Fox's tweets, and he talks about how he's written I'm gay several dozen times, and he says that Sonic Fox is being annoying, and every time he writes, I'm gay, he's showing why people hate gay people, which was a joke. I'm not saying that, that I'm not, like, offended or anything. I, he was kidding. Um, and he makes some jokes about how why Sonic Fox is just, uh, he, he's using it for an attention, he's just being annoying and, and obnoxious. In response, Sonic Fox and some help from his furry community, I don't know who the account was, I know it was part of the furry community, uh, trended worldwide hashtag I'm gay in all capital letters. 
I tweeted about it a few days ago. I thought the whole situation was really funny and hilarious. I was, uh, I thought that people being upset at Sonic Fox was funnier, like was the funny thing to me. I, I, I thought, I thought him, you know, just writing "I'm gay" all the time is funny, and I still think him writing "I'm gay" all the time still is funny. And people getting more upset about him writing hashtag "I'm gay" um, in capital letters is even more hilarious. Uh, in the whole thing. Um, and then since then, people have talked, now that it's been in the news a little bit, people, people have talked about it more, about, you know, people keep saying, I keep, the thing I keep being, uh, being repeated is that Sonic Fox is the only thing he talks about. The only thing he says ever, all the time is that he, I'm gay. And for, for all of us who actually work in esports, and especially you two who come from fighting games, People know Sonic Fox because he's might be the best Mortal Kombat player of all time. He's won majors in several different games, including DBFC, MK, Injustice 2, not to mention like anime fighters. And he's really known for being an incredible fighting game player and esports player of the year. This whole I'm gay stuff is really more for reactionary people online that follow, like, politics and culture and that want to be upset about some stuff and that kind of follow games. But if you really know Sonic Fox, he, he, this whole thing was kind of a joke meme to him, and he doesn't say this all the time. I'm more on his side. I think him making people mad is really hilarious. I think it's funny. <laughs> I think he should tweet I'm gay every fucking day for the next two years because of this. I find it more hilarious than I do obnoxious, but I, I want to hear what you two uh, think about this. Yeah, I mean, Sonic Fox is like, I think his like, stock has been going up ever since he made his like big speech on the Game Awards, right? A lot of people who definitely didn't, who didn't follow the fighting game scene, definitely didn't follow esports nor probably cared about it at all, suddenly took an interest in Sonic Fox, right? And he has become like famous and known because of that speech or like that's kind of like where like his fame kind of kicked off I think and really, you know, got a lot of attention. Like I can't even name who won esports of the year previous year right like i don't even remember it's just not memorable what he did was so memorable cold and uh okay that cold zero there you go. i knew it was like a csgo so the point the point is that we didn't remember that right because it wasn't a memorable like like a speech that he gave or whatever but sonic fox doing this and so a lot of people didn't know who sonic fox was or what his brand was right and his brand is he's a furry he's gay he's an amazing fighting game player and the fact that he went up there like and like did his speech and was like i'm gay like you know i think that was super cool for him to do and i don't understand why people are, are taking issue with that oh he's politicizing the event like no that's just his brand he just wanted to get it out there like he wants to be known for the like the black very gay player and great like good for him so and i think like him like that video that you're talking about with that youtuber or whatever was pulling up examples of his tweets like he has like a couple of dozen tweets well it's like what a couple of dozen tweets out of like what how many tweets has he made in like the his whole twitter history right of course if you sit there and go through them one by one it's gonna take a very long time and it might make make it seem like he tweets i am gay a lot but it's probably like an actual like a very small percentage of his full Twitter, like, byline, like, profile of everything he's posted. So I just don't understand why people are making, like, such a big deal about the things, like, him saying I'm gay, like, frequently or adding it to his Twitter posts. Like, I just don't get it. <laughs> I think that this is one of the things that makes him such a strong fighting game player is he knows what, he knows the moves to make to cause you to have the reaction that he wants. And I guess he enjoys the reaction that he gets from the internet or Twitter or whatever, mainstream media, or I, I don't know. He, he enjoys, I don't know. I don't know if, if you would call it trolling, but he enjoys getting a reaction out of people. And I mean, I think if I were, I mean, I guess if I were in a similar position, I, I mean, I, I'd probably do the same thing. I mean, he has definitely cemented himself as somebody that has the potential to uh, probably cross over to mainstream status, kind of like 
you know, like Ninja, um, and has probably secured his, you know, a spot on whatever team he chooses to be on from now until he doesn't want to do it anymore based on his ability to reach so many people, uh, to get a reaction out of so many people, good or bad. Um, so I think it's, I mean, kudos to him. I mean, good, you know, in, in fighting games, right? It's like, well, if you, if you go back to a pre, you know, pre social media era, it's like, if you didn't like the way that somebody was talking, then you should probably beat that person to shut them up. And so, I mean, really that should be inspiration to all the people that have such a huge problem with, you know, his Twitter account, which is really like, well, just be better than Sonic Fox and you too can say whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, to me, that's the way that fighting games just are. It's like, it's a, it's a meritocracy and you know, the people, you know, the best players are the ones with the biggest platform to say whatever they want. So either do something about it, like get better and beat him or uh, maybe go point your attention elsewhere so that these things don't get you so hot and bothered all the time. It's just... I mean, there there are non-players, though, critiquing him. And people don't give a shit about being better than him. They're just gonna critique what he's saying. So what? Anyway. I mean, um... it's really like... It's like, I don't know. Who cares? It's It's so easy... Maybe it's just me, but I mean, I'll just like unfollow people if I don't want to see what they tweet about. It doesn't. I guess. I guess maybe. Maybe what it is is now being older. I don't have the same sort of energy to get all mad about every little thing. Like maybe I. Maybe I used to. I. I, I don't know. It's just. But yeah, hey, but you know, it's the internet. <laughs> People are mad. People love being reactionary on the internet, Ryan. We were talking about this before. Like, they want to be like, I'm so mad, and here is why I'm mad, and you should all listen to me be mad well, yeah, about something. Sure. I mean, we're, we are living in a call out culture where people have this us versus them mentality that is sort of predicated on the notion that. The, the pie is fixed and it's us versus them. And if they have more, that means that I have less. And so it sort of causes, you know, people wanting to be offended or triggered or call out, you know, things mostly on social media, very rarely, if ever face to face, you know, in some sort of like one-to-one, -one, you know, adult conversation. I mean, you know, throw that one out the window. Um, <laughs> You know, as well as, let's say, having some sort of, you know, well-written, articulate, you know, response or, you know, criticism to something that you have issue with as opposed to, you know, using 140 characters or, you know, or like a, you know, two-minute Twitter video to like, you know, cause, bring attention and cause a ruckus. I just, I don't know, I, I, I'm not, those are the things where I'm, there's clearly a disconnect between me and uh, and people who engage in that kind of behavior and i'm just I, I just don't get it i agree <laughs> thanks rod <laughs> great <laughs> great cool yeah all, all right. right uh so let's see do you guys want to hashtag stay mad ha yeah let's get that one <laughs> Let's get that Stay one. mad. Yeah, let's get that one Stay trending. Mad. Stay mad. Uh, do you guys want to talk about Pop Dog? Sure. Or... We could, you know what? Let's save it. Okay. Yeah, next week? But, yeah, sure. let's do it next week. Yeah. Okay. Do you, uh, Sounds great. Let's see if anybody has any questions in the uh, in the chat, just in case. Oh, we're taking a chat Q and A. Oh, that could shit. be Twitch chat. Is there <laughs> actually watching 
Just in is case. Is there anyone watching? Is it just us three? Yeah, yeah, like... yeah. Is it just <laughs> yours? Do we play on our own browsers? <laughs> oh. Lothair says, what's going on with Soldier Boy's consoles? That shit was hilarious. Did you guys see that? Wait, his consoles? Yeah, okay. So it didn't it didn't last very long, but uh there somewhere around the holidays, not too long ago, Soldier Boy, I guess, was like the spokesperson of some retro like emulator console. I don't remember what it was called, but it clearly had his photo on the box. I mean, this is one of these sort of like gray market consoles that you might see at a swap meet or something um, <laughs> where, you know, it combines all of these different games from different systems into one console. Um, obviously, you know, I didn't look too deeply into it, but uh, I did see, I mean, when you see that type of stuff, you're just like, wow, like whose legal team let this through? Um, but it did get through and then it started to gain steam because I guess soldier, I mean, I couldn't, I'm, I'm out of touch and don't know, not super familiar with his music, but apparently has had a big enough reach to trigger the legal department at Nintendo who sent them the cease and desist. And then, uh, now the soldier boy console website just redirects to the Nintendo website. Wow. Really? <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So, did any of these consoles actually get sold and make it out into the wild? Like, Fuck yeah, there are people who have this. That, yeah. thing, that thing's probably worth so much now, though, because of like uh, Nintendo doing that. Uh, <laughs> it's like a rare collector's item. You can't even like obtain it anymore. <laughs> right for all of the Soldier Boy diehard. <laughs> gamers out there that just... it's not about being a soldier boy fan it's about being a collector if like you are a collector of retro game consoles one of these days you're sure. probably going to want to add that to your collection okay maybe one day this one will be in a museum <laughs> well that's uh interesting soldier boy is uh, really diversifying his portfolio um i just want to say that i actually talked to him today you talked to soldier boy no he's in new york <laughs> and I might be meeting up with him tomorrow. What? What did you guys talk about? Wait, what? is this about his esports I mean, team? Because he wants to start like, an esports team, right? Oh, he follows me on Twitter. Like, you can check. I've been DMing him. What? Uh, I because he said he wanted to start an esports team. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. I slid into Soldier Boy's DMs and we're like, "Yo, bro, if you, you, you need, you need I'm the, the number, number one. one. I'm the number one esports consultant." consultant. You just you should listen to me. I know how this is done. And he All right. and he did, and, and he gave me his number. Oh my God, Soldier Boy! <laughs> so if you're out there, please be careful. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> bro. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, well, here's the thing, Rod. <laughs> Can you, as an exclusive to the Untitled Esports Show, shoot a quick video that we can run next time? with soldier boy okay. with him talking about what happened yeah all right i'll bring the exclusive if this happens not sure if it will he was out you know getting his shopping on or the fuck <laughs> he fucking is doing it today he went on like a uh, barstool radio and oh, whatever cool. today um talk about how he's bigger than drake Go check out that. <laughs> Go check out that, that interview. Uh, He's the hottest rapper in the game right now, right? Drake's got 100 thieves, man. He's got a... in the game. Okay, so, his, uh, so if you meet up with him, can you can you shoot a yeah. quick video yeah. and then we'll run it next time? Yeah. I mean, Push thank no. you. I mean, as the number one esports consultant, you know. Hopefully he'll have his console with him too. We could fucking play that shit. We'll yeah, I mean Zoreen, <laughs> I mean, you know, Zoreen wants one for, for her collection, and now that they can't be sold, maybe he'll just give you one. Yeah, I can uh hook us up, Rod. Well, actually, if you've been following his Twitter, he's been asking people to donate to his cash app, and then the, the person who donates the most, he'll like give him he'll give away like some random shit. I'm not sure if he's gonna give me a console anytime soon, Ryan. I think I have to donate to the cash app to get a console. What the hell? He's he's begging for donations. Boy, what the hell is the cash app? 
Okay. What is well, that? glad we're right on topic. By the way, <laughs> good esports. I'm glad Soldier Boy is now getting into esports. This is a <laughs> fucking conversation that I wanted to have on this type of show. Are you two believers in Soldier Boy's esports team coming up? Well, you know, I mean, if the number one the console, esports, right? I mean, if the number one esports <laughs> consultant is helping with the planning and execution, then I mean, it has uh, you know Echo Fox, TSM, Cloud Nine. Watch your backs, cause Slasher and Soldier Boy are coming for you. <laughs> Yo, okay, if, you're okay. pro, if you're a pro gamer and you smoke blunts all day, <laughs> we are in, we are interested in your services. So Mango, you're like perfect. Mango, if you want to leave Cloud Nine and you want to drink every fucking day on stream, you come to Soldier Boy and Slasher team. All right. Oh, and Slasher's team. All right. So you're gonna be uh, one of those team owners, huh? Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Justin Wong is in there. He's already you know he, he's got a new tag. S J B J Wong G G. Yeah. See, you got your first recruit. That was easy. All right. Well, now all you got to do is meet up with him and <laughs> share this elaborate plan tell him you got all yeah and you know like step one meet up step two show him the plan step three question mark step four profit easy hey real talk though real talk i am so curious where he's like what game he's going to insert his esports team into because yeah Rod, it's quite what? like limited right so fortnite just throwing it out uh, is there fortnite esports is there fortnite esports you don't at the think moment? that this like... was like that that he was trying to create retro esports like that was <laughs> he was trying <laughs> yeah. to take the publisher model you mean that tetris money man yeah like and flip it on its head for grand prize he's yeah. like look riot owns league of legends Blizzard owns Overwatch League. I'm going to own these consoles. Everybody's going to have to buy my consoles to compete <laughs> in retro esports. <laughs> well, if, he I throws, mean, if he throws a prize pool in, yeah. Well, he can take all the money they made from the retro game and give it to Justin Wong. That'll be... <laughs> <laughs> that'll be... Here, Justin, he's $12. Don't spend it all at once. <laughs> I would love hey, you know what? That might be a better deal than what he got at Echo Fox. <laughs> oh shit! Ooh. Nothing against Justin. Justin's great. Damn, there Rick some, Fox. Um, Damn. There are some problems at Echo Fox. Currently. We can talk about that next week. We can talk yeah. about it next week. <laughs> yeah, there is yeah, a reason she... there is no one left of that fucking team. I assume Sonic Fox will be gone soon. Are you what? They, he, how he, could Sonic they Fox possibly get rid of Sonic Fox soon. after all that? I don't. I. I don't think. I don't think they got rid of Justin. I think Justin left. Yeah. And what? You can read between the lines. I mean, it's not, wait, Justin. Wait, 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 Justin wait, tweeted what? Justin Wong just went back on Fox today. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh my Ryan, god. What? The <laughs> fuck? Literally in the chat. Literally in the fucking chat. He tweeted earlier. You run what? a new e news show. You're in fighting games. Wait. Ryan Gutierrez, Gutex, Pogchamp. Please tell me you are aware. He is now. Aren't you glad we're doing the show, Ryan? Yeah, we're hoping right. you like stay up to date with okay. all the Look, all the news three hours ago we were we were going <laughs> we were about to go live, okay? Justin Wong <laughs> says, I'm here to announce I'm currently a free agent and I have not re signed with Echo Fox. They are an amazing team and wish them the best, but I want to see what other opportunities are out there. DMs are open for everyone. Please spread the word. Would love to find a new home. And he's wearing uh, one of these sweet uh, esports entertaining. Yeah, he's stuff. wearing your shirt. <laughs> he's helping promote your merch, and you didn't even see the tweet. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I was trying to get this show <laughs> off the ground, but I know that now. That's true. That is true. Know. That is true. Well, he that says he's sad. homeless now and he's living in your apartment, Brian. <laughs> That's he, fine. He wrote that in chat. Okay. That's fine. I mean, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I'll take Justin's room. You can have mine. You can have mine. I mean, I was going to ask you at the beginning of the show, Ryan. You don't have Mike Ross hiding underneath the bed, do you? <laughs> I mean, I could check, but last time I did, he wasn't there. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, let's end it on that sad note. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey, what can I what, what can I say? I you know, this is why we do the show so that we all can know you know. Yeah, everyone knows the things that are going on. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys. You guys didn't know about the Allied Esports thing. I had to write a 10 tweet mm -hmm. uh, summary to, to you know, since the number one esports consultant couldn't be bothered. So, you know, <laughs> now we're even, you know, now I got the I got the heads up that Justin's a free agent. You guys got the heads up that Allied Esports is is a thing. Thank you. Truly blessed. Hashtag blessed. And we want to thank everybody. Wait, are we done? Wait, wait, wait. Can we do the last topic? Oh, sure. Do what? That. Are we actually? Okay. Sure. Can we do, just do AD, ADGQ? Because it was just ended. No, I have so much to talk about. Like, if we go into that. Oh, sure. so you want to save it? it? I don't we care. Let's save it, to, let's save it for next week we alongside Pop Dog. Well, so what? Like, it doesn't make it. Like, we're going to talk about it a week later. It's fine. All right. All right. It'll That's still be relevant, Rod. Even yeah. though the Allied Esports World Poker Tour thing happened a while ago, we still talked about it, and it's still, it's still a thing. So if it's not relevant next next week, then it probably wasn't that important. I mean, I'm not relevant any week, and I'm not important at all. So that's kind of why. <laughs> why am I? I don't even know how I'm still going. So I because guess that's you're the, the number one. You're the number one esports consultant, and you got a you got a date with with Soldier Boy. So I mean, you know, you got. <laughs> <laughs> what don't you? Uh, how you doing, Ryan? I mean, I didn't say it was is better. With, is my date with Soldier Boy? I don't even Are think. Jelly. I don't even think I could name a Soldier Boy song if I heard it. <laughs> to be honest, isn't that the, the one that like... that hoe? <laughs> that one. Yeah, Superman yeah, that, that one. <laughs> anyway, on. anyway, no. Ryan's into like EDM and like house and techno and all that. Dude, you've never stuff. Superman that hoe, Ryan. <laughs> no, we are not going there. You stop! Know, stop! 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 stop. We have finished that. <laughs> talking about comic books, Zareen. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? Oh, He's yeah, making a comic book. DC reference. hero, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's dirty. <laughs> All right. Anyways. All right. Uh, Same time next thank, week, guys. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll figure out a way to, to, to schedule it at a time that actually works. Now we actually know how to execute, so it'll be better next time. Uh, to the couple dozen people that are watching, thank you so much for tuning in. You can follow here or wherever you're listening. Eventually, it'll be on iTunes. Subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Do all that stuff. Uh, Slasher, where do people go for updates on the world's number one eSports consultant and his new joint venture with Soldier Boy? Well, for right now, I'm the number one eSports consultant. But if you guys didn't know, uh, the NYXL kicked off all of their players on their second team, which is XL2, their contenders team. So you and got a shot looking, now? They're looking for New York players only. Uh, as you see, I'm already... Wait, wait, sorry. I'm already, you know, I thought, ready to go. Wasn't, I'm already ready to go. Wasn't, wasn't that team only Koreans? Yes. The, yes. Like the academy <laughs> team, which is like the second level team that feeds into the Overwatch League team. Okay, but not the... It, like the, no, the, the main team is all Korean. Right. They kicked off all their players on the second team now for New York only players. They're Ooh. looking for local players. Got it. Okay. Um, so the, the so the A team is still all Koreans. Yeah, the A team is still all Korean. But I am here. I've already got, you know, I'm already representing New York. I got the swag on. I'm forty four seventy five peak. Uh <laughs> peaks SR. Uh I was rank one in the world for support in season one, which is only two and a half years ago. Um, I have beaten Siegel one time in a tournament. Okay. In a tournament match. I've done that. I've beaten NYXL players in a tournament game one time three years ago in the beta. And I feel like I am deserving of being on XL2 so I can make my way to Overwatch League. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to come next week, guys. I'm going to try to you know, hook it up with Soldier Boy. Uh, continue being the number one esports consultant, but you may see me soon 
in OWL. Zareen, when, I, when, I can see I can see you're already really jelly right now. Of, when is when, when are the when are the tryouts? Uh, next like few weeks. Okay, so when you go, I want you to shoot, you know, some video and Content. Then we'll, okay. yeah, and then we'll run it, uh, you know, the next week, so that if you make the team, we have some sort of send off, and if you don't make the team, then we have some interesting on the field content. Cool. I mean, it could it can't be any worse than your matches when you're in your jacket and shape. <laughs> <laughs> First off, you know, Vlad, <laughs> I have I have the credibility of a strong I, I I of a strong fighting game player. My accolades as a competitor are longer than you could ever at this point in the game, ever hope to compete with. <laughs> so you can knock, you can knock me, you know, you can make fun of me now, but it's better to be a has been than it never was. Oh, Zorin, uh, where could people go? For man, more trust Zorin? you guys to turn Rod's outro into like this five minute pissing contest. But uh, you can find me on Twitter at Zorin. And on Twitch, I am Team Zoreen, one word. When do you, uh, when do you, when do you stream? I usually stream on Fridays at in the evening Pacific time. Mm. I'm based on the West Coast, so. All right, Twitch.tv slash Team Zoreen, Twitter.com slash Slasher, the exclusive place to find the content <laughs> of the number one esports consultant. You will not see it on any other websites or publications. <laughs> You for good go reason there. for yeah i mean this is part of the plan uh guys right. wanna thank you so much for watching my name is gutex you can follow me on the instagrams and the twitters follow uh cross counter tv on uh, uh twitch and youtube and whatnot <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and we'll most likely see you next week bye thanks everyone